So today we're going to talk about something that if you are at like an advanced beginner level or an intermediate level is really going to supercharge everything about your playing. And I'm trying something new in this video. We're actually going to be trading. We're going to play a little bit together. And I hope that that's a tool that we could start to use on a regular basis to actually try some of these ideas. But that's coming later. Let's talk about the topic first. So chord tone soloing. This is one of, I think, the best ways to play solos that sound great, that don't require you to know every single piece of information out there about scales and approach tones and substitutions and all that kind of stuff that sort of gets in our way of making a coherent and cogent musical statement. And the coolest part is all those things that I just mentioned, you know, approaches and chord substitutions and all that kind of stuff, they can all be built on top of the skill of chord tone soloing. But here's the thing that I hear from my students all the time about chord tone soloing. They say, yeah, Nick, chord tone soloing is great and everything, but after about a chorus or two, it starts to sound really, really boring and repetitive. And the reason for this is most of the time, that they're completely ignoring one aspect of chord tone soloing that when considered should never produce that result of this is boring ever again. All right, so let's define something. When I'm saying chord tones for now, for now, I simply mean one, three, five, and seven of every chord. If you happen to see a six chord, just sub out the six for the seven, same thing. Okay, so we're not dealing with extensions yet. It's four notes per chord. All right, so let's stack the one, three, five, seven on top of each other. Okay, cool. What we realize is that we have a structure that's made up of all thirds. One to three is a third, three to five is a third, and five to seven is a third. So it would seem that when we're chord tone soloing, we're always using the interval of a third. And I will tell you, if you only use the interval of a third in your entire solo, yes, it's going to be boring because our ears want variety in the intervals that we use. So if it's only thirds, might sound cool for a little while, but not for a very long period of time, like multiple choruses. So it would appear that my students are correct when they say chord tone soloing is boring, but they are ignoring two things that are really, really important. So the first thing is that they confine themselves to one octave. If I play one, three, five, seven, the only move that I have is to go back down, seven, five, three, one. So what you hear is this sequence of thirds going up, and then a sequence of thirds going down, and that's it. That's the only thing that happens in their solo. It sounds something like this. Now, what if we did just one really, really simple little thing, which is instead of playing just one, three, five, seven, we played one, three, five, seven, one. Do you notice something? We broke that intervallic structure that is just thirds. And we introduced what? A second. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's just one second, but there are still all these thirds. But here's the thing. As soon as we introduce that interval of a second, it's enough distraction from the sound of the thirds that it completely and totally changes the game. And all of a sudden, just injecting that interval of a second is enough to make our chord tone solo sound absolutely amazing. So now just real quick, remember what that last solo sounded like where I was sort of um, limiting myself to one octave and never crossing over, never doing that second? Now I'm gonna allow myself to play this stuff in multiple octaves. You're gonna hear that second injected kind of all over the place. And I want you to think about how much better it sounds. And I guarantee you, I'm gonna be having a lot more fun doing this because my solo is actually gonna sound good. So let's check it out. Thank you. 
Isn't that amazing? Just injecting one interval that's not a third is enough to make this sound really, really interesting. And I would argue that if you didn't know I was just playing chord tones, you probably wouldn't even notice. You just say, hey, that's a pretty good sounding solo. That's the power of that one other interval. Now, of course, there's another part to this that's gonna make your chord tone solo sound even better without stepping outside of the chord tones, but that's gonna be for the next video. I'm gonna turn this into a series. Let's just focus on crossing that octave barrier for now. Let's do a little bit of practice together with this. So we're gonna be playing over a B flat concert blues and we're gonna do some trading and we're gonna do this at two tempos. So this will be a video you can work with uh, kind of no matter what level you're at. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play a chorus, you're gonna play a chorus. We'll do that one more time. So we're each gonna play two full choruses and then we're gonna do four choruses of trading fours. So the first tempo we're gonna do this at is 120 BPM, then we'll take a quick break, and then we'll also have one at 160 BPM. And I'm gonna put uh, markings in the video so that you can quickly find that stuff and you can shed with this video as much as you want to. But remember that, chorus, 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 then we're gonna trade fours for four choruses. Now, if you need to work out your chord tones. First of all, here's the progression that we're gonna use. And second of all, take the time to work those out to cross that octave barrier before we start playing together, because it's gonna pay off and it's gonna go much better for you if you do that. So if you're somebody that needs to work on that, just stop the video right now, work on it, and then come back to it when you wanna do the trading. All right, let's dive in. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so hopefully this was fun and useful for you. Please let me know in the comments below whether you wanna see more videos like this where we're actually playing off of each other and doing some real-time practicing actually on the video. I don't see enough of that on YouTube. So let me know if this was helpful, if you wanna do more or if you absolutely hate it, let me know about that too. Look forward to hearing your comments down below this video. And if you like this kind of stuff, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. That really, really helps us. Subscribe, turn on notifications, all that stuff that I say at the end of every video. But most of all, just thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I hope it brought you something useful and valuable that you could take into your own practice time. Make sure you stick around because part two and that other idea that's going to supercharge your chord tone solos is going to be coming out soon. So we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.